Hi, this is Nancy, the other duo from Tales of the Ravenous Reader. Hi, I'm Hi. Ellen. Hi! Look who I have with us today. I'm so very happy to have Ellen with us, and I'm, I have this opportunity to interview her, which is a great honor. And Ellen is a New York Times bestselling author of books such as Crank and Impulse and many more. And this week, she just released her newest novel, Baby I've Never Known. It's got a lovely cover. Beautiful cover. <laughs> it's so good. It's one of my favorite reads that I've had read so far this year. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Of course, it's a pretty new year. <laughs> it is, but I was totally engrossed by it. I read it in one day. Just oh, and that's a big book. So. And that's a big book, but it was it did very good. <laughs> okay, the book is about a girl whose father has been moving her around the country for 14 years. Mm -hmm. um, they finally settled down into a nice little California town. She has had a whole year of school without having to be pick herself up and move. She has friends, one of whom has become closer than a friend, um, and she has another love interest. So she has a boy and a girl love interest in her life. Um, that she's she's trying to figure out who she is, and amidst all that, she discovers that everything she knows about herself is a lie. And that was pretty intense. Yeah. yeah. Uh, from the description alone, it's clear that. This book is tackling some pretty intense issues. Um, abandonment, abuse, sexuality, and even kidnapping. And your fans are used to you tackling these very hard issues. So what was the inspiration for this book? Okay, so I've been, you know, what happens is, like, I'm like really old, so I think I carry a lot of stuff around with me for a while. Um, and really, the, what sparked the idea was I was doing a book signing, and this a mom came up, and she goes, "You should write about parental alienation, which is when um, a, a child is with one parent, and that parent has been telling them, pretty much gaslighting them, to believe that their that their child doesn't want anything to do with them." And then that tied into a personal story of mine, which was my um, ex kidnapped my three year old daughter out of daycare, and I lost her for three years. So it, it was like, okay, this is my chance to write out this part of my history that really has been eating at me, kind of. You know what I mean? So I think, I think that happens to me sometimes. <laughs> I, I liked how both point of views in this story kind of interweave and then eventually converge at this moment that it's like, oh my goodness, I didn't see that coming. And one is told in your traditional first and the other is done in prose is there a reason for why Ariel's and Maya stories are, are done that way I just feel, I feel like um, I wanted the voices really different and I wanted there's I don't want to give any spoilers but there there's kind of a time frame you know weird juxtaposition that I wanted to make clear that there was something going on without telling me exactly what was going on. Mm -hmm. So it made sense to me to do that. And also I've been, you know, kind of trying to grow my readers up a little bit so yeah. that instead of always looking for just the disparity of language, they start to look for story again. Mm -hmm. So the prose brings you back into that kind of place where everybody normally reads rather than verse. And also to appeal maybe to readers that are a little afraid of verse, mm -hmm. you know, and so they can get in there, if they open it and look at the prose verse, maybe they'll give the verse a try. Right. Which is very good, which is actually was my first time in, in doing that. Right. Yeah. Very good. Um, Ariel's sexuality was a part of the story that really made me think, because it wasn't so cut and dry. I like the fact that she kept going on through her mind trying to figure out, do I like boy, do I like the girl, am I bi, am I gay, am I straight? I like that you were that through her narrative that you really got to see that decision making process that she had. Was her voice very clear to you when you were writing her or did it take some time for that to come about? I didn't start the book that way, but I in really thinking about um the struggle with knowing who you are anyway, mm -hmm. it's, it seemed to make sense to me because she, she really doesn't, she's so isolated as a child that she really doesn't know. You know, she's never had any even friendships, let alone any kind of romantic experiences. So to be attracted to both male and female and, you know, 
and also they have this kind of pressure that a lot of bisexual people do that, you know, we have all these ideas that you know, maybe you're just you know, playing around or maybe you're just loose or whatever, you know, and that's not the case at all. And so it, was, it just felt like the right book to explore bisexuality. And I think it was done very well. Thank you. I really liked, I really loved her narrative, so it's something that I enjoyed reading and I could understand her reasoning from both sides. Right. Okay. So, what I found to be uh, disturbing is the abuse aspect of it through her father. He he was able to manipulate her in a way that she had no idea that she was being abused. Right? And the term gaslighting was came through, and I had never it never clicked on me because I had seen that movie years ago that that was what was going on, right? and I could see how that she had was was going that and just didn't recognize it, which was very sad. How much research did you have to do on that? Or, you know, a, a lot, but, but, you know, the thing is, it's like, gaslighting is kind of in the news politically right now, yeah. but um, there's a, the real aspect of that, so the real the reality of that is that's what she, she was told. She yeah. was told that, you know, the, the person who inspired the character and also the hero, that, you know, you, your mother deserted you, she doesn't want you. And, and if you told something enough, especially as a child, you start, you, you believe it. What, do you, what else are you going to do? This is your father telling you this. Why would you not believe that? Yeah. You know, and so to, to explore the psychological aspects of gaslighting was also important to me because you do see that a lot. And especially within abusive relationships, not always father daughter, but you know, you know, boyfriend girlfriend or boyfriend boyfriend or boyfriend girlfriend or whatever. Um, it's it's an adult thing as well, and and it's easily it's easy to be manipulated by somebody when you're with them all the time, mm -hmm. and especially if you want to please them. And for her, there was an abuse aspect too, where she she felt like she had to please him, so it was easier for him to gaslight her than it might otherwise be. I enjoyed this book very much, but I always want, I want just a little bit more. In the end, I felt that, that it ended at a point where I'm like, oh, well, could I just get a little like a little bit of an epilogue to see how things would go just a few years from now and how their lives would have turned out. Yeah. yeah I mean, do you ever find yourself like, it's I mean, look at the size of the book. I know, I know, <laughs> it's like, I know. and also because I mean, I I always have this feeling that at 17, 18 years old, how how much more can I give you? You know what I mean? She's she's still at the end of the book trying to figure out who she is and where she's going to go. So I I think it would kind of spoil it if I made that decision for her. I think she is a character as a person because they're real to me needs to make that decision for herself and it's, she's not going to be there then you know it's going to take her several years to really understand you know who, who she is as far as you know sexuality who she is as far as you know parental abuse or parental relationships mm -hmm. um who she is okay. you know at 18 she didn't know who i was definitely not <laughs> Even today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm still looking. I'm still trying to figure it out. <laughs> so let's move on to another one. Um, what are you working on right now? Are you at liberty to say? I can tell. Yeah, I can tell you. So I'm working on the two th I just started the 2018 Young Adult, mm -hmm. which addresses gun violence. And it's like a way departure for me because 13 Young Adult novels all written first person, even mm -hmm. with multiple viewpoints, all first person viewpoint. Not this bad. one is third-person omniscient, and the gun as seducer is narrated. Sort of like like death in the book thief. Yeah. Yeah. So it's and it's circular. So you meet three people that could be the people you don't know, who because at the end the gun ends up in the exact wrong hands. So and the point of it is it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter which way it goes, if it then ends up in the wrong hands, the outcome is the same. Good. So, end of next year, around this time next year? I, uh, hopefully, it'll be January of next year yeah. if I can get it done. And SNS is like, you know, yeah, let's get it done. So, we're, we're going to work on that and get it done. Okay. So, this is what I ask everybody um, What have you read that you can recommend that you would recommend? 
Um, I'm reading, like, I'm reading for an award right now for mm-hmm. the last two days of Golden Kite, so I've read a lot of stuff lately. I mean, I love Jeff Zettner's yes. Serpent King, right? Oh, God, it's, like, so amazing. Um, you know, I'm, I'm like, God, I don't know if he needs another award. I mean, how many, how many awards does he get? But I love that book. And the interesting thing about reading for that award is, you know, there are books that come to you that have a lot of buzz. Mm-hmm. And sometimes I'm like, this one, really? <laughs> you know, which yeah. is really kind of amazing. But mm-hmm. um, and I also love Kathleen um, Glasgow's um, yeah. Pieces. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So that one was really great too. Christy, my writing partner, loved that. One. Yeah. So it's on my TBR list. I haven't made. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty amazing. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. Well, thank you so much for spending We're time out. with yep. me. Thank you. We hope it was good. Hope you guys enjoyed it. And just check this book out. It came out this week. Yeah, check it out. You will love it. it. You will love it. Okay. <laughs> All right. Bye.